Hello, welcome aboard. Thank you everybody for your patience associated with us um, setting this up this evening. Um, just to let you know that we have been upgrading our system uh, to be able to undertake more of these seminars of this type. And um, you're the second cab off the rank, so we're, um, we're learning as we go. So thank you very much for your patience and um, um, sticking with us to um, bring this on board. Um, Obviously, as you can see on the screen, this is the Artaman Screedscape presentation. So this is um, a presentation that we're doing that talks about the material that we've had up on the Have Your Say website. So I hope you've had an opportunity to be able to have a look at that. There's an opportunity to be able to provide questions and we'll be responding to those questions as we can um, at the end of the presentation. Before I kick off, what I would like to do is do an acknowledgement to country. We acknowledge the traditional inhabitants of the land on which we stand, the Aboriginal people, their spirits and ancestors. We acknowledge the vital contribution that Indigenous people and cultures have made and still make to the nation we share, Australia. A little bit of housekeeping as we kick off. Um, the presentation will be recorded and it will be available via Have Your Say, a YouTube. Um, so if other people will miss that, there'll be an opportunity. You'll notice that your microphone has been muted and the camera has been switched off for all participants. Um, the process that we go through is, I will undertake a, um, a presentation and there will be a series of question and answers that we respond to at the end of that. You can submit questions through the webinar for response if time permits as we go through it. And there is a chat channel and you can click on a speech bubble at the bottom of the screen, I believe. And a Q&A. Um, uh, okay, thank you. And a Q&A. Um, so please post any further questions via Have Your Say if, you, if anything comes up um, at the end of this presentation that you think of that you may uh, wish us to respond to. Um, I'd like to welcome you all and thank you very much for coming and especially like to welcome Mayor Gail um, Giles Gidney, um, Deputy Mayor Councillor Craig Campbell and Councillors Lynn Saville, Councillor Wendy Norton and Councillor Christine Chuan. Thank you very much for participating and um, coming along and joining us with this. Um, the process is I'll be under I'll be going through a presentation, um, but what I would like to do before I go through that presentation is ask um, Mayor Gail Giles Gidney if she would like to um, speak um, to us. And I believe to do that, you need to unmute your microphone. Yeah, already unmuted. <laughs> Here I am. Thanks very yeah. much. And uh, of course, you haven't introduced yourself. Did you want to introduce yourself, Will? Oh, sorry. Yes. Well, I, I did have other introductions that I was going to do at the start of the presentation. Um, Great. I'm, uh, my name's Will Robertson. I'm Council's um, Urban Design Specialist and I'm joined here by um, Hugh Myers. Hugh Myers is the project manager who's been running this and been doing a great job of um, doing all of the preliminary reporting that we've been undertaking as well as uh, pulling the work together that the um, that the consultants have done on this master plan document. So thanks very much here for joining me. Um, I, I also have um, Daniel Sui, who's our, our traffic engineer with me and uh, Tanya Stark, who looks after our community engagement. Thank you, Gail. Terrific, thanks, Will. Uh, what a pleasure it is to be here this evening. Well, I feel like we're in a bright, brave new world of community engagement. Uh, but very, very heartened to see that 55 people have in fact registered for this particular presentation. And I can see online we've got 34. And I do want to acknowledge the councillors that are also online as well and thank them for their hard work. And as we'll outline, we've got a number of officers working on this project and I'm sure we're going to be hearing more about that. And I'm very, very pleased that we've got officers of the Colourby that we have who are working on this. This is something that has been uh, in production for some years. Um, back in 2016, we started off uh, with our local centre strategy and that has had a number of iterations and also the opportunity for community to feedback. So I think this is the fourth occasion that we've had a formal community feedback in regard to plans in this area in particular. 
Um, but what I'm really critically interested in is the feedback from the community, those people that live, eat and breathe uh, our Tarman. And there's also a lot of people that visit our Tarman regularly. It's one of our major transport hubs. We are absolutely committed to upgrading the area. It uh, is somewhat sad in the Artarman streetscape area. We can do a lot better. There's been a lot of reasons why it's taken us some time. There's lots of services under footpaths and uh, lots of things that we need to negotiate. For example, that public toilet that people are screaming out for um, isn't actually on council land. We do need to liaise with some other agencies. So I do thank those people for their patience while we've been working through this, but we do want to get it right. It's a very significant amount of money that we're spending when always when we're spending ratepayers' money, we want to make sure that we're open, transparent and accountable, but also responsive. So I just look forward to seeing the presentation this evening, but more importantly, the feedback we get from our community. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. Thanks very much for that. Um, so what I'll do now is go through um, a presentation that's based on the master plan report that the consultants um, have prepared and Hugh and I will be sort of tag teaming our way um, through that. But before I kick off, I'd like to thank Jason Ritchie for the work that he's done in pulling this together and certainly supporting us in our skill level in undertaking um, a webinar. So thank you very much, Jason, who's our IT specialist, who's, who's joining us this evening and um, helping our way through it. So we'll go through a Q&A session. Um, at the, after the presentation, we'll go through a Q&A session and I'll invite the mayor to ask any questions, the councillors to ask any questions, and then we'll respond to questions that have been um, submitted to us. Um, and, I, and at the end of the presentation and the q and I'll go through the next steps that we're undertaking um, after we've done this webinar and we start to um, work our way through the real project as it comes on ground. So it, as Gail kicked off, it, 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 it started with the principles of the local centres and that was, a, that was a great document that did take a long time to put together. And we captured a lot of information from the community associated with that. And from that, we've developed a lot of principles, a, a number of principles. And one of those was very much focused on the community that we saw that these local centres are a community focus. They're a place for community interaction. They're a place for community engagement. They're a place for people to be able to meet, interact, socialise, and certainly um, support the business community there. Um, another key element that came out of the local centre strategy was the protection and preservation of the qualities and the character that people love about the existing centres. And that goes as much to the existing built form and as much as the built form that we're going to be introducing to the place so that it still retains some sort of level of meaning and understanding in the improvements that we bring to the public domain that we're doing as part of this streetscape project. And linking in place we see certainly the local centres not ice operating in isolation. We see them as being linking places for people and areas that people, again, can interact and socialise. So some of the key ideas that came out of the, the streetscape were certainly just simply the streetscape improvements. People wanted to see a better quality of what was happening. Um, public amenities sat very highly on um, what people were after. They wanted a safer pedestrian environment. They were concerned about the traffic impacts and the influence that traffic had on the area. Um, they wanted to see what could happen in the laneways as a different place for people to be interact, different movement corridors, um, cycleways and so forth, as well as having some sort of active frontage and activation associated with um, the laneways. They'd like to see some sort of new public space happen. Um, and different sort of pedestrian links and certainly how we could improve some of the existing pedestrian links and additional pedestrian crossings to be able to cross Hampton Road in particular, which carries quite a heavy load of traffic. So another element, what, what I'd like to introduce to you is what we'll be talking about tonight and what's on the table and what we've loosely called what's on the fridge. So something we need to pin up and we may need to address later, but it's not part of the scope of the delivery of this initial phase of the document. So what's on the table is certainly improving the amenity and the links and the physical links, improving traffic amenity and traffic activity and what's happening in Hampton Road especially, 
outdoor dining and how we can improve on the offer that's available with outdoor dining because it's certainly starting to move and improving in the quality that the, um, that the businesses are offering there, new public spaces and how we can deliver a better outcome in the public spaces and certainly what we would be able to do in the laneways that are there. A couple of items that are on the fridge and they're influenced by program and budget and the delivery of what we want to do in the master plan. So they can certainly be elements that we address in the master plan, but maybe not be able to address in the first stage delivery that we're doing. And one of those is parking, and that's increasing the volume of parking and certainly a great increase in what we would be able to deliver in parking in the short term. We're hoping that um, future development activity may be able to give us opportunities to be able to integrate parking with new development outcomes. Traffic lights at the northern end. Um, that's been identified in the traffic strategy um, and the cycle strategy associated with something there. That's not something we'd be doing in the short term. It would be subject to longer term funding. So that's an item that we'd need to tuck away and put onto the fridge there. Improved pedestrian links associated with the existing library and the community space there. We understand that there's been some community responses associated with the safety um, regarding the um, pedestrian refuge there and has pedestrian crossing been considered? Again, that would be subject to further investigation. It's not part of this first stage of delivery that we're looking at. Um, the pedestrian overpass and pedestrian access, particularly the pedestrian tunnel going through to Wilkes Avenue. Um, as you appreciate that Sydney Trains land and it's not our property. We have approached them, we've, we've spoken with Sydney Trains and I understand that um, the Progress Association is also following that up with Sydney Trains to see what opportunities they may be able to do in the short term to be able to improve the accessibility associated with that but we currently don't have budget and funding to be able to deliver an outcome there in the short term because of the interaction that we would need to undertake with Sydney Trains in regarding that. So we hope you appreciate the challenges there. And the local centre strategy, we appreciate that we've gone through the local centre strategy quite recently. Um, that's gone out for public exhibition. It will now be going through the next phase where we're preparing a development control plan, the local environmental plan, and there will be opportunities for the community via the exhibition of that document to be able to have further input and express concerns or say what they would like to say and see what they may be able to, what we may be able to do and see happen in the further stages associated with how council's moving forward um, with that documentation. And the library site, we can't address any of your concerns at the moment regarding what the future of the library site is that's going to be future consideration and future investigation. So we, we hope you, you appreciate our concerns with that area there. But first to give your voice, please. Everyone has the ability to be able to cause change and interact. So please respond via have your say and as best as you can through the webinar that we're delivering this evening. So, so far, we've undertaken the draft local centre strategy and I've just spoken about the progress of where that is. We did undertake some initial preliminary study while the local centre strategy was progressing, uh, some analysis work on our Tarman. And as part of this program, um, Hugh has also been undertaking some very detailed traffic studies associated with um, what we're looking at being able to deliver, as well as um, the Chatswood to St Leonard's um, cycle path. All great, um, all great challenges and all elements that we're looking to incorporate within the master plan document. So the study area itself um, is primarily associated with um, the streets and the roads on the southern side of the railway line um, around Hampton Road and Hampton Lane. So what's informed us? Um, one of the primary areas that we've been informed is obviously the local centre strategy. And we, we did gain a great amount of insight and information in the local centre strategy from the Artam and community. And this was one of the areas where we actually received um, the most. You can see this is a, a detail from uh, that document and it's the master plan that architect as consultants prepared for us. And it almost looks like a detailed master plan because we received so much information. So just going through some of the key elements associated with that that we understand was the public domain improvements associated with the station entry point, uh, the crossing point 
and the accessibility and the connectivity between the station in particular and the local centre and the shopping centre on the southern side of um, Hampton Road. Um, improving the amenity associated with outdoor dining and the retail sector because it's, it's grade separated, it's at a different level, it's quite narrow and quite constrained. So um, the community wanted to know what we would be able to do there. Certainly improving traffic and the volumes of traffic um, that go through there and Hugh will be able to talk in a bit more detail about the volumes of traffic and what we are doing in response to that. Um, a little bit later on and how we could activate the laneways so that they're not sort of a rear service lane. They're part of um, uh, the whole of the centre and they contribute to the whole of the centre. And last but not least, the delivery of some sort of public amenities associated with um, the local centre. And we'll talk about what we're delivering there. The consultants uh, developed uh, a number of principles and they were focused on enhancing the village feel that they felt was, which was all about the scale and the accessibility associated with Artarman as a centre. And that's about connectivity, um, delivering good quality public domain and open space, um, and public domain built form, quality of public domain built form that had a relationship with um, the heritage and the architecture of the, um, the centre itself, as well as its location within a heritage conservation area and proximity to the heritage conservation area. Um, character and views, how we could look at those sorts of qualities, and certainly wellbeing, sustainability and health, and how we could deliver aspects there. Um, and part and parcel of that is um, the safety and welfare associated with um, a younger generation also. Design opportunities. Um, this is a number of design opportunities that consultants had, um, had identified in their analysis and drew upon from the local centre's strategy. So part of that is traffic calming um, and how we could look at certain devices to be able to um, calm and slow traffic and reduce the traffic volumes to some degree. Um, providing a green edge and a backdrop to soften the whole space, especially along the railway line in the areas where we have the least space with um, Sydney trains. Crossing points, um, how we would be able to provide safer and better um, crossing points in Hampton Road to the green space and the railway station. How we would be able to integrate cycle connectivity so that it isn't simply a through route for cyclists. It also becomes an area where cyclists can dismount, slow down and engage with the space. So it becomes a nodal point for cyclists rather than just a, a highway through. Um, footpath amenity. Um, certainly looking at how we can improve the outcome for the vendors who want to have food outlets um, and other retail outlets along that uh, retail strip. Um, uh, looking at pavement widening, widening and improving the amenity of the footpath areas in locations and certainly delivering some sort of public amenity and toilet blocks and did I mention providing some sort of public amenity and toilet blocks. So if I may I'd like to hand over to Hugh regarding traffic. I'll need to navigate the buttons here. <laughs> yeah. um, good evening, everyone. As um, Will introduced, my name's Hugh Myers. I'm, I'm the project manager assigned to this project, and I'm going to talk in a little bit of detail about the three major traffic proposals um, identified in the master plan. Um, so the first proposal um, came out of the local centre strategy, I suspect, and that's about improving the connectivity between the retail space and the rail corridor and the park and improving the access to the train station. So that involves relocating the mid block pedestrian traffic lights just north of the entry to the station um, to the intersection of Broughton and Hampton Road. And in order to do that, what we did is we engaged a, um, a traffic consultant to undertake a feasibility study and probably the two most important components out of that study um, were the survey data that was collected in Artarman, um, which identified that Hampton Road is basically operating as a sub arterial road. Um, that means there are 20,000 vehicles a day um, up towards Brands Road and about 13,500 
cars a day down towards Jersey Road. Um, that identifies two things. It's operating outside of its classification, which is a local road. Um, and it also identified that there is a lot of through traffic on Hampton Road that is not stopping in the centre and is probably accessing the Pacific Highway and the commercial centres um, to the south. Um, from the, the traffic studies, um, we also got the, the consultants to, engage, um, to model a couple of um, different arrangements. Um, those arrangements were generally more around the phasing of the traffic signals. Um, but in the feasibility study, we identified option four as a preferred option. Um, this was seen as a, a more middle ground option um, because it doesn't create substantial delays down Hampton Road and probably creates enough of a delay to stop people running through the, um, the local centre. Um, in order to implement that, so in terms of like the physical layout, I'll give you a, um, a quick description. It involves reducing Hampton Road to two lanes. This involves building physical barriers, which involves extending the footpaths out into the parking lanes on either side. So there will be only two lanes running through at that intersection. That will require us to ban the right-hand turn into Broughton Road. And the other implications of um, the new traffic light arrangement is that we will have to reverse the direction of the laneways in Hampton Lane um, between Francis Road and Broughton Road and Broughton Road and Jersey Road. This will prevent an alternative rat run going through the centre and it will allow people to access Broughton Road from Francis Road. Um, I think the outcome of all of this is really, it will improve one, connectivity between the retail space and the park. It will improve, improve access to the station and it will improve, vastly improve the safety at the intersection because there has been identified there has been some traffic accidents in, um, at that particular intersection. And then it'll have an overall effect of reducing the traffic volumes down Hampton Road mm -hmm. because it'll be less desirable to access it and it will reduce traffic speeds. Um, overall, this will improve the pedestrian amenity in the centre and it'll improve the placemaking for the centre. Um, the second traf major traffic proposal that we've identified is implementing a 40 kilometre high pedestrian activity area on both sides of the station. Um, what this involves, this involves um, a number of traffic calming devices on both both sides. Um, they range in from flat top speed humps to entry thresholds to pedestrian refuge. So there's a number of items identified on the plans. And the overall effect of this is firstly, it'll allow, by implementing these, it'll allow us to support an application to the state government, Transport for New South Wales, to implement implement a 40k zone on both sides of the station. And obviously the, the net result of all this is it will reduce traffic speeds um, on both sides of the, um, the centre and it will reduce the desirability to drive through the centres. So once again, this will reduce the volumes, it will reduce speeds, it will improve safety across the centre, improve public, um, the pedestrian amenity and it'll have an overall effect of providing a better place um, for people to be. The final um, traffic proposal that we looked at was some modifications to the existing parking. Um, the modifications have come about due to the physical form of the streets. So this is the implementation of new blisters and traffic refuges and street trees. Um, but the important thing about this is that we saw parking as a high priority in the centre and retaining as many parking spots as we could. And the net loss of parking in the centre will only be four places. We've also modified some of the parking places. So we did a review of the existing parking and the needs, including loading zones, bus stops and disabled parking. And we've made some minor modifications to that too. Um, so they're the major traffic proposals for the centre and I'll hand back to Will. Um, thanks very much here. Excellent, excellent overview of parking. Um, uh, we're now going to move into the 
discussion and presentation of the master plan that the consultants um, had been preparing with us. Um, this is a very small screen, unfortunately, um, illustrative of the of the master plan. Um, and this is just running through the key points. So we won't be reading out the document and the master plan document to you. It is available on Have Your Say, and we trust you've had an opportunity to be able to review that beforehand. Um, if you haven't, please go there and have a look at it in more detail. And I think we'll post the PowerPoint presentation up on Have Your Say as well. So you've got an opportunity to be able to review this at your own leisure or show it to other people if you would like to. So some of the key elements associated with um, the master plan were social amenity improvements and that was certainly the landing point that we've identified um, at the station precinct and having some sort of plaza space that people can um, have an arrival point when they come into our tarman. It's an exit point as well. So it's a point where you can meet. It's a point where you can interact. Um, it's certainly a point where um, people can cycle to. Um, we would be able to incorporate facilities where people would be able to lock their bikes and catch a train or so forth. Um, the other improvement is certainly the toilet block that we've looked at saying, yes, we will be delivering a toilet block as part of the stage two works and the stage two works and stage one works will be operating in close um, proximity um, to each other and I'll identify how the staging works at the end of the presentation. There'll also be a point, uh, sort of a social point where people can interact. We've got, um, there's sort of a, an arrangement which I'll show you. We've got an illustrative, illustrative of later where, where people will be able to sort of um, be and interact and uh, a, point, a pl place to meet. Um, we're looking at expanding how the retail activation can operate in the master plan through footpath improvements over time, uh, rationalising the way that we deal with um, public seating to be able to provide um, more opportunities for businesses to be able to operate um, outdoor dining. Um, access and pedestrian movement. Um, we're looking at um, how we would be able to improve the crossing, um, certainly at the point where the station precinct is and other locations um, within um, the centre. Uh, looking at greening the centre and certainly that's associated with the strip that we have along the railway line, but it's really looking at greening the centre overall where we'd be implementing additional street tree planting and water sensitive urban design practices uh, to be able to improve the sustainability count that we have. We know that greener spaces are, are better places for people, their opportunities to be able to sit down in a, in a seat underneath a tree and have a chat with people to say, how are you going? Stop, interact, slow down. And this is a space where we would like to see people undertake those sorts of activities. And certainly traffic calming associated with Hampton Road um, and the laneways and some of the other areas to maximise um, what we may be able to do. And as Hewitt identified, we'll be looking in the longer term at how we can maximise retention of street parking and prioritise parking. And certainly we would like to see some sort of improved development out activity happening here where we can integrate um, parking and additional facilities within development outcomes as they come along. So this is a, a couple of um, illustratives that we have of the Senate to show a little bit about how it looks. Um, this is an existing view from the um, northern side, eastern side of Hampton Road looking across toward the shops. Um, and this is a view saying, look, this is something that it, um, that it may look like. We could, there could be some steps or a place where you can say, look, this is where you might be able to meet. This is where you can hang out. This is where you can wait for some friends. Um, you can certainly see that we're looking at improving the number of trees and planting associated with the street. We're moving the curb line um, to reduce the amount of traffic and reduce the width of the street and certainly improve the amount of plaza space that people have to be able to move and interact. And you can see just in the center of the screen that um, a cyclist going through there is quite politely dismounted and walking their cycle through um, with all of the activity. And that's certainly an outcome that we would like to promote and support um, as opposed to needing to police that sort of outcome. Um, it's a learning curve, but we certainly would like to be able to see pedestrians and cyclists be able to sort of get along and um, interact 
with each other in some sort of a shared space and how we can deliver that as an outcome. The other one's looking at improving um, the footpath amenity and the existing green space that's there, how that can provide um, a, better, um, a better environment for people and maybe be able to support other sort of events um, that can spill over into that space while still respecting um, the qualities of what the space is all about with its tree cover, green spaces, incorporating water sensitive urban design that we talked about. You can see the, the, the curb line adjusting there with planting along the edge of the curb to keep people separated from some of the um, some of the traffic that's happening in that location. And we would certainly be retaining any of the memorials and monuments that are within that space and reflect, re, re, respectfully integrating them into the future works as they as they come along. Um, and the other one's really the pedestrian amenity associated with um, the new signalisation um, of the intersection there at, um, at Broughton Road. So rather than having that single sort of pedestrian crossing and um, the interaction that happens at Broughton Road, we felt that the best outcome was to be able to control traffic movement and pre provide a higher level of pedestrian welfare and amenity through the provision of, of traffic lights that certainly limit the traffic movement on Hampton Road as well as Broughton Road. Um, and you can see here quite clearly integrating um, additional tree planting along both sides of the, the road there and lower scale planting um, along the curb extensions that we've, um, that we've introduced in that location. So I'll now move into the um, into the Q&A session. And I'd like to thank everybody who have, um, who've taken time to review the material that we've, um, that we've prepared um, and we've had prepared for you and taken time to prepare and submit um, a question. As we've identified, there are opportunities later on um, to be able to respond. We will take, a, a, we will make every effort to respond to the questions um, that we have at hand and any questions that may pop up um, and come along. Um, but we do say that if there's any other questions that you think of, um, we will also provide um, a response via Have Your Say. And please use the Have Your Say website to um, respond to um, any additional questions and any additional comments you have um, regarding that. So I'd like to ask Gail um, initially if she would like to ask any questions or there are any questions from Gail and how I can do that. Yeah, uh, thanks, Will. Just um, there has been a lot of focus on the toilets and you mentioned stage two, makes me a little bit nervous. Okay. Can you talk a little bit more about the timing of stage two and uh, the implementation of a toilet facility there? Look, I'm, I, actually, I'm happy to do that before we, before we go into the Q&A session. Um, this is a staging plan. Thank you, Gail. This is a staging plan um, that's been prepared as part of the, um, part of the process. Um, stage one, and, and really, while, they're, while it's called stage one and stage two, I suppose that's just semantics associated with naming it. Um, they will all be delivered effectively concurrently and within a, a reasonably short period of time. Um, the initial stage is the traffic calming that Hugh had identified associated with trying to deliver the 40K zone. And that will be delivered in early 2021 and, 2000, and mid 2021. And that will comprise curb build outs and pedestrian crossing points and traffic slow, slowing devices, uh, raised thresholds, pedestrian refuge, flash top, flat top speed humps and traffic blisters. Um, and that is funding that we've had the opportunity that's made available to us, Daniel, from RMS. Yes. Uh, that, that's funding that's been made available to us from RMS. So it's important that we deliver it within a particular time frame, And that works slightly ahead of us delivering some of the other, what we call stage two works, which is from mid 2021 to early 2022. And that comprises the installation of the traffic and pedestrian signals at the intersection, the upgrades to the footpath and the station, the toilet and amenities block, which was in, and it's really sort of, I suppose, stage 1A and stage 1B. And stage three would be 
um, future town centre, future local centre upgrades, and that's really dependent on future funding and particularly development activity as that comes on board. So that's a snapshot of, um, of what the staging is and what we anticipate with the budget that we have available sitting at the centre of the, um, the plan there, what we'd be delivering at what we call stage two. Terrific, thank you very much. So I'll now open it up to any further questions and we have had some previous questions um, submitted. So I'll just go through um, some of the some of the questions did fall um, outside of the area of the master plan and we haven't been able to address them at this stage. But certainly um, some of those we may be able to incorporate as comments in the overall master plan. Um, for areas of future um, consideration. And this includes access to the station, which I'd identified earlier and, and, I, and I had to put on the fridge. Works to Brand Street and Hampton Road and north of Brand, uh, Brand Street. These questions and be directed to the appropriate council teams for further investigation and also any questions posted before and during the... I've lost the bottom of that page, I regret. <laughs> we'll need to get back to people associated with that. So another one of the questions that we'd received was, can the no right hand turn at Broughton Road be at peak hours only? And I'm assuming that that means that outside of peak hours, you may be able to make that turn into Broughton Road off Hampton Road. Yes, sir. Um, the response that we have here is that that would cause further traffic delays. Now, further traffic delays may be seen as an area of concern or not an area of concern if we want to try and reduce. But at the moment, we're saying that there is, there, at the moment, the, the present scheme is that there will be no right-hand turn. It, it would cause significant traffic delays significant. as opposed to traffic delays, which is a desirable effect, but significant traffic delays is not a desirable effect. So yes, that's why there's um, the right turns been banned. Okay, thank you very much, Hugh. Um, another question was, was Hampton Lane considered as a route for the bike path. Response that we have here is our vision is to extend the implementation 10, zone, 10 kilometre zone along Hampton Lane. So we'll be looking at that as being a 10K zone, not necessarily a shared zone. So that'll be Hampton Lane from McWilliam Street to the north. By lowering the speed, vehicle and cyclists are required to give way to pedestrians in this type of environment. Council's not planning to install a dedicated bike path or lanes due to the site constraints within that area. One of the aspects is, of course, that if people always have the opportunity to be able to take that as what they would perceive to be as an alternate and safe route to be able to move through the centre and, and, and sort of identifying that as a zone which, is, which we've spoken about before, where pedestrians and cyclists and vehicles, by the very nature of the speed and the space and the constraints of the space, need to be able to get along and it's not necessarily a vehicular dominated location. Ideally, when development activity comes along, that will also have some sort of active frontage that um, can have shops and cafes and anything that um, may introduce people and bring people into that space and have a more active environment. And by that very nature, it tends to slow traffic down, it tends to slow people walking down, people who walk and cycle and slow down, spend more money, and we like to see that as an outcome. What is happening to Buller Road? So it's two questions. Uh, I'll, I'll you want to you yeah, take that I'll, one? I'll you will take this one two for of, me. Two of the questions identified in here, and they've been raised in, um, in conversations too. Um, the feasibility study is a document that informed the master plan. Um, the feasibility study done by the traffic engineers identifies um, changing Buller Road from one way to two ways. Um, that is not going to happen as part of this public domain master plan. It's going to be retained as one way. So that will probably clear up that confusion. Um, the item about um, the appropriateness of using the laneway as a cycle path, um, I think Will's addressed. It's a 10K zone. Um, therefore, a separated cycleway, which is essentially what the cycleway is, um, doesn't seem appropriate because it's a 10K zone. Um, and then you might ask, well, we're actually incorporating it in a shared zone down Hampton Road. Um, that will have its own signage 
on it too. So the shared zone will then have signage going down it. Um, at some point in detailed design, we'll identify a speed limit for cyclists and we may identify a dismount zone for the cyclists. So there's an existing dismount zone there at the moment um, and we may retain that. But those kind of details will be resolved in um, the detailed design of the, the plan. Thank you, Hugh. Um, another question we have, how can we make our tarmac more kid friendly? Um, we'd like to think we're making every attempt that we are um, uh, in introducing and implementing this master plan and the ideas behind the master plan to actually make it more kid friendly. Um, we're lowering vehicular speed and uh, making it a better pedestrian environment, reducing traffic volumes. We're looking at widening footpaths in, in the plaza area, certainly improving the amenities. And I think the provision of the toilet block would also allow for baby change and people to be able to accompany someone, a youth, in, a, you know, a child into a toilet if they needed to. Um, we're looking at introducing and upgrading um, street lighting, um, and convenient and safe access to cycle paths, uh, good line of sight in all of the areas, um, key pedestrian crossing points, facilities, facilities, curbside parking and planting associated with uh, the road edge to sort of keep people away from it. Um, we're improving the accessibility to some of the other recreation spaces that are nearby and we'd like to see this as an area that sort of services those spaces where people would be able to come and get something and then go down to Artaman Park and be able to use the barbecue facilities and so forth and the upgrade that's happening at Artaman Park that'll be coming up in the next couple of years. So we'd like to think that some of these are the ways that we are making it um, kid friendly. Certainly opportunities for casual, interactive play space um, within the areas as opposed to seeing it as an appropriate location uh, for a playground or a fully blown playground. I think kids can find areas to play as best they can um, with, with the spaces that they have rather than putting some play equipment in there. So we haven't really looked at doing something like that in, um, in the first stage, but we'd certainly like to think that we are improving the welfare and the outcome for kids within the space. Another one, how are you going to prevent the rat run down Francis Street and what further investigation will be done, please, Hugh? Um, okay, I, I can answer this question. I think um, to answer this question about uh, why Francis Road won't become a rat run, because um, we are banning the right turn into Gorton Road, which would mean that you could potentially um, turn right at Francis Road and head up towards Puller and go around the zone. Um, I think that's answered by the idea that once you enter the centre after Brands Road, you are actually entering a one a 40k zone, which is a high pedestrian activity area. So we've got to reduce speed. Um, it will be less desirable to drive through the centre because of the reduced volumes and the reduced speeds in the centre, plus the effect of um, local traffic calming devices, which is the 40k zone devices. So they are being implemented on Francis Road, they are being implemented in the laneways, and this will mean that people, over time, um, they will look for alternative strategies. And that leads us into the second stage of the study that we're looking at. We are working with Transport for New South Wales at the moment um, to identify where that traffic will go. Um, it is most likely going to be redistributed onto the state network and that includes Mowbray Road and Pacific Highway. Um, and we are currently doing, will we'll be doing some modelling with the state government to identify exactly where that, that will go. That will mean lead them into the next, um, the next changes because any changes proposed in our time and may have ramifications on their network. And that means that they may have to adjust their network, which includes, I think, Daniel is a right turn from Mowbray Road onto the Pacific Highway. But that's what the second study is talking about. It will identify exactly what cars are moving through the centre, what cars are accessing the local centre, and where all that traffic will get redistributed outside of the centre onto the state network. So 
that's the answer to that question. Thank you, Hugh. Um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Councillor Nick Wright, who's um, joined with us. Um, thank you very much for joining in, um, Councillor Wright. Um, I'm not sure at what time you came in, but uh, this is this will be videoed, uh, so it will be available um, for viewing um, after the end of the um, the presentation, and we'd be happy to give you a debrief um, on it if you would like us to present. And um, I'd hand the, I'll pass the, um, I'll pass the mic over to Councillor Wendy Norton, who would like to ask a question. Hello, Will. Um, thanks very much for the opportunity. Uh, I guess I'd like to know a little bit more about the toilets, please. That it's an issue that's been raised at the Access and Inclusion Committee on numerous occasions, and uh, I just like to have a little bit of a talk to you about that, please. Okay. Um, yes, uh, thank you for that. Uh, we will be providing an accessible toilet, um, multi-sex toilet within, um, the, in, within the facility. We'll also be providing facilities for baby change. Um, so there will be a number of toilets within that space. We're yet to undertake full detailed design associated with that, what that would be. Um, but we will be addressing those elements um, within the detailed design phase. I don't believe that there is a detailed design within the package, is there? There's some sort of indicative, yeah, there's an indicative design associated with that, but we will be, do, we will be addressing those requirements um, as we move into that stage. Um, is there anything further there, Wendy? Was that? Uh, yeah, look, I will, it'd be great if, if, that, um, if members of the Access Committee could um, yep. offer their expertise in that particular area. Um, because the, there are, um, they have expertise that you and I don't have. Um, it would be helpful if they were given that opportunity, please. Absolutely, absolutely, we will. Yes, we'll in, we'll incorporate that within the program and make sure that there's um, um, every opportunity to be able to review and consider, provide comment and input in that stage of the process. Thank you very much. I'm I'm Lord. actually it's not my ward, so I'll now shut up. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Um, were there any other councillors, Jason, who have identified that they have a query? Okay. Um, so I'll go through, the, we, we have received um, some additional um, questions. Um, uh, how do the Wilkes Avenue improvements integrate into the master plan? Um, Wilkes Avenue certainly an integrated element and uh, our time and the our time and community certainly identify Wilkes Avenue as um, as being part of the overall our time and centre and we know that we're very much challenged by um, the quality and the condition of the underpass that sits within the Sydney trains land and the fact that the overpass and the lift only goes from the Hampton Road side into the station precinct and it doesn't in extend all of the way over. They're challenges that we're trying to see if we can take further with Sydney Trains. They have identified that they have expended their capital works program associated with works around the Artarman station. So they don't have anything in the short or midterm to deliver improvements in that area. So it's certainly an area where we would like to see community support in trying to work forward with what we may be able to do in influencing Sydney trains with that outcome. But the work that we've just done recently associated with um, the design and the upgrade of Wilkes Avenue, some of the elements that we would see moving forward would certainly be an integrated signage strategy to identify to people in our, on the Artarman Hampton Road side that Wilkes Avenue is there. And it's certainly uh, a great place for people to be able to go. And certainly on the Wilkes Avenue side, we'd be doing the same sort of thing, signage and identifying that there's a cycle path there and that people can link their way through. We'll be linking through with um, the Elizabeth Street improvements and a pedestrian crossing in that location. Um, we're improving upon the seating and the outdoor dining offer that's within that space. And as we know, 
the existing library building is currently being used by um, Metro in the midterm as a project management office and we'll be investigating what sort of opportunities we have to be able to use that facility to be able to provide some sort of community benefit for our time and overall. But it's certainly seen as being an integrated element and something that contributes to certainly the quality and the character and the heritage character of the space um, within overall area of our Tarman. So we don't see it as a separate um, offshoot. The works there are expected to be able to be delivered prior to the commencement of Hampton Road Works. Yes. So th those works will be happening um, earlier. Um, does council encourage private shop owners to improve the, front, the fronts of their properties? Um, I don't believe that we have um, a separate program associated with that, but certainly we'd be looking at upgrading um, the public domain in that area. And we have had discussions and meetings with um, some of the businesses there who would like to extend their dining offer uh, by improving um, outdoor seating in that space. So it offers something more than simply um, seating areas that it has spaces that can have a multi-purpose and provide um, outdoor dining experience. And people and then the shopkeepers have identified that they would be willing to maintain um, those areas. We would certainly see um, the improvement of that space coming along when some of the development activity um, comes online some of the businesses that may have or properties that have there have been sort of waiting for something to happen to start to come along um, and improve that sort of um, outdoor quality of the built form. Um, is the plan to have the toilet very close to the station? It is close to the station toilet. In fact, it's at the, along the same alignment. It's in, it is within the land that council currently leases. Uh, from Sydney Trains for the purpose of beautification. And Sydney Trains supported us in saying, yes, we identify that in, in including that sort of facility is part of the beautification lease. Um, did you say no right turn to Francis Street? No right turn to Francis Street. No right turn to Francis Street. Right turn to Francis Street will be allowed. Okay. Um, any plan for welcome to our Tarman signs around the, street, the precinct? Um, there will be a signage strategy that we'll be developing um, as part of this program. And we would like to see um, all of the signage welcoming people to our Tarman and whether that includes or identifies some sort of identity sign at the threshold yet to be determined in future, um, in future delivery. Um, but we would certainly see the plaza space and people coming out of the station and leaving the station as being a welcoming environment and a welcome, and we would, we would be ide certainly identifying it um, in that regard as our Tarman and part of our Tarman that you've now arrived. Um, this is a fairly detailed question, so I'll, I'll read this out and address it as best I can. Why can't Broughton Road be closed to traffic from Hampton Road and the lower section turned into a pedestrian plaza similar to Wilkes Avenue? Um, the short answer to that is yes, it can. Um, the longer answer is it is not part of the stage two delivery works, but it's certainly something that we would be able to undertake subject to further investigation and certainly subject to um, development activity that may take place along that side. Um, there are some servicing requirements and a longer term approach that's, that's needed to be able to deliver that. And we believe we be, we're delivering a fairly high level of um, amenity to people by improving the traffic signalisation at that location um, without providing um, a road closure there, but we would certainly see a space in that location as something that would in the longer term improve the quality and character of that area. Um, why are shared paths being considered given the amount of pedestrian traffic that alights from the trains at peak hour? Aren't bicycles better on the road where it's nearly flat and speed limit is 40? And they are likely to be kept pace with the cars, especially when two sets of traffic lights are considered. A serious commuter cyclist would never want to use the shared path and if they did, 
pedestrians would definitely be at risk of collision, similar to the existing shared bike path in Ataman, where a pedestrian, whereas a pedestrian I've had several near misses. And I think in a way that does a great job of, of addressing a lot of things and in a way answering itself. Serious cyclists who want to race through would not go on the shared path. And in fact, it's unlikely that they would use the Artaman cycle route. They would probably be with the traffic out on the higher order roads, moving at a much higher speed um, rather than um, inflicting themselves with needing to interact with um, with pedestrians in that location. We would see these paths as being an area where cyclists would slow down, stop and potentially dismount as they come through the centre because ideally we don't necessarily want to see cyclists as being through traffic, which is what's compounding the traffic movement there at the moment because most of the traffic that goes along Hampton Road doesn't see our Tarman as a destination. And we would like to see cyclists see our Tarman as a destination we're improving the outcome for people in that location so we see Hampton as being more of a node rather than a high speed through link for cyclists in that location I need to wind it up 7 30 thank you all it's 7 30 now am I am I allowed to go a little bit over time and just finish off this last question if we're allowed to and people have time available I'll just go through the finalization of this question in one photo, the lawn in the Artaman Common is removed and totally paved. In another photo, it's tiered seating. I'm not sure where, where, what is being put where, as I'm finding documents very difficult to view online. Does the plan involve removal of the entire lawn area currently in the common and paving the area instead from the railway boundary fence to the curb? If so, how does this add value to the community, I would prefer to have some lawn retained as it greens the area. I would like the grassed area to be made suitable for lunchtime seating of groups of people such as the office workers or friends as well as individuals. And I welcome that comment because the illustrative, the illustrative diagrams that we had in there is really to inspire and, and, and bring on this sort of comment that we would like to see. Well, what exactly would you like to have when we drill down to this sort of level um, that we hadn't picked up in the local centre strategy? The tiered area that's part of the common is part of the raised area that is currently between where the lift is and the station tunnel egress point. And we're looking at that being the area that we have the tiered seating and using the level chains associated with that to form some sort of amphitheatre that you may wish to call it outdoor seating um, space. Um, and the other diagram did show some of those areas of grass being removed. We're more than happy to retain green areas and grassed areas and improve the seating amenity in those areas if that's what the community strongly feels is appropriate in that space. They're illustratives and they are there to give some sort of idea on what, what it could be, but this is the opportunity for the community to say, no, this is what we would like as an outcome from a more detailed point of view. Glasses on. Could Council in Future commission a web-friendly presentation of its proposals? Wide PDFs with two pages visible at a time are hard, if not impossible to properly examine online. When viewed, full width the text is minuscule and when trying to zoom in and out one is battling with the pdfs wanting to go to the next page yeah and i guess that is a very good point we need to reduce the quality and the clarity of um, some of the documentation that we have online um, to be able to make it accessible to people to be able to download um, and there may be a number of documents that we need to put there that people can access and have um, a different level of detail. We hope this presentation that we've prepared sort of summarises some of the key aspects as opposed to delving into the detail, but we may look at how we may be able to divide those documents up, um, provide them at a higher resolution, but there would need to be more documents that are, um, that, that need to be downloaded and, and accessed. Um, I'd like to thank Jason for helping us with this webinar. And as we'd identified earlier on the piece, we're at a bit of a learning curve as to how we can um, improve the outcome. 
and what we may be able to do. And these sort of comments help us along. Um, we certainly don't, we see it as being critical of what's happening as opposed to criticism. So thank you very much for that. And we'll, we'll be using that to improve what we may be able to do um, in, the in the future. Um, what ex for access for disabilities will be made from the Elizabeth Street side of the railway line? And I regret if that relates back to the state and the quality of the pedestrian tunnel. That is, a, that's a Sydney trains issue currently that we've had some dialogue with, and I believe the community's had some dialogue with, um, and it's not something I can give you an answer for at the moment. Um, Daniel, do you have anything you would like to say regarding um, traffic related questions or questions. any sort of input? Okay. Have we? That's a wrap. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Um, the next steps will be finalising the master plan. We'll be integrating comments that you've made. Um, there'll be a report um, to council for adoption. My regret in my spelling error there. Um, project delivery, stage one, as we'd identified, is the traffic calming. Um, that's subject to the delivering the funding commitment that we currently have. Stage two, documentation and then delivery. Um, and we'd identified the program associated with that. And we'll be reviewing what has gone on um, with the master plan and what's been implemented prior to expending any future works subject to development activity and funding. So many thanks uh, for your um, participation here. Um, I urge you all to go to the um, Have Your Say website, uh, look at the material if you haven't had an opportunity to be able to look at the material and provide any further comments um, if you can. Thank you very much. Thank you, Will. Thanks, team.